In a previous video, we described a basic A-stable multivibrator that simply flashed a couple of LEDs. This is an improvement upon that. On the basic A-stable multivibrator, you have a waveform that essentially looks like this, which is okay for flashing LEDs, but for just about anything else being used as a clock circuit or a driver for, say, a, a higher current device, load that is, uh, it's not very useful. So what we're gonna attempt to do here is modify the circuit so that we have a nice clean square wave. And it's actually very easy to do. What we're gonna do, this is your basic A-stable multivibrator and what we've done is we've selected component values that will yield a frequency of around one kilohertz. And as described on a previous video, the frequency is of this circuit is determined by 0 0.72 divided by RC. Assuming that this is a symmetrical circuit that has a 50% duty cycle. This would be your R and this would be your C. So this comes out to approximately one kilohertz. In fact, I'm coming up with about 1058 hertz, which for our purposes is just fine. So why would we want to even clean this stage up here and make a square wave? Well, or say a uh, high powered uh, or a high current driver for an LED, an LED, a bank of LEDs, you would want a nice clean signal because whatever you're driving, you want it to, you're going to want it to be either in on or off state, not anywhere in between. You want to keep your driver out of its active region and keep it in the saturation and cutoff, which means you're just turning it on and off. Uh, so you're going to want a nice, perfectly clean, uh, perfectly clean uh, square wave. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to, and here, by the way, is the actual waveform that I took a picture of, uh, of the basic a stable multivibrator, which would be this part of the circuit oh, on the left here. So in order to design our, our cleanup stage, we're going to want to have some design criteria. And so some of the criteria that I came up with is we want to have a non-inverting output. So the output of the basic A stable multivibrator is this. And we want to have a non-inverting output, so we want it to be the same. So we're going to want our output to basically look like this. Nice, clean square wave. So another criteria would be, other than non-inverting, would be we want a low impedance output. That's because we don't want whatever we're connecting the circuit to, say we're driving something, uh, a driver device, drive, a device that we're driving, whatever it may be. We may not know what kind of uh, input impedance it has. So if we have a low output impedance, we're less likely to have our circuit affected by um, what could be a low impedance input on our on a device that we're driving, whatever it is we're driving. So we don't want any current that is drawn off of the uh, output of the circuit to affect the timing, ultimately to affect the timing of the circuit or the wave shape. So we're gonna want a low impedance output. We're gonna want a high impedance input. We're gonna want a high impedance input because we don't want to affect our basic A-stable multivibrator, we don't want to affect the timing or the symmetry of the waveform. We've got this, which isn't a great waveform. We don't want to mess it up anymore, so we want to keep it as it is. We're going to have our high impedance input. Another criteria would be that we're going to want to trigger this pulse to go positive as soon as this starts to go positive, because what we want to do 
because we want to we want to cut this off. We want to cut this part of the waveform off and create this this red this uh, blue area here. So all this right here, we want to get rid of this. So we're going to want to trigger this as soon as possible. And um, to do that using transistors, the best we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to start at 0.7 volts right here. Um, so we're going to want to design it so that we're going to get as close to 7, 0.7 volts as possible. We've got a 9 volt VCC, so that's going to be less than 10% of the, this side of the waveform. So it won't even be really noticeable once we're done here. So let's work backwards through the circuit here. So if we wanted a 1K output in peanuts, which is reasonable to drive a device driver, about 1K. And if you assume about a, a gain for these 2N3904 transistors of about 150, which I think is actually conservative, um, then you're going to need, just to put into the active region, you're going to need 150 times less current uh, than the um, than the um, that passing through the 1K resistor to put this transistor into the active region. So if you use the trend, if you use the trend uh, resistor base resistor of 150 times this, you would end up with about 150K. But you'll want to put it into saturation. You want to multiply that by five to force the um, transistor into saturation. So that comes out to around 30K, a standard value is 27K. So now we've got a 27K resistor, uh, which will readily put this transistor into saturation and, and treat it like a switch. Now, in order to turn this transistor on, this transistor is going to have to be off. And that'll mean that you're going to get 9 volts biasing, uh, and you're going to have current biasing this, and you have, you're going to have current flowing through here. And that current flowing through here is going to be based on 9 volts minus the 0.7 volts for that junction, which you're going to have leave you with 8.3 volts across that resistor there. If you take that 8.3 volts divided by 27K, you're going to come up with about 30, 310 microamps. That's how much current flows through this resistor uh, in order to uh, forward bias this junction and, and um, saturate this transistor. Now for this transistor to go low, in order to go into saturation, it's going to need to pull this entire 9 volts down. So that's going to give us 9 volts here across this, this resistor. So we're going to take 9 volts, divide that by 27K, and that's going to give us 333 microamps going through this transistor here. So our collector current will be 333 microamps. So given that you're going to have 333 microamps of collector current, when this transistor goes into saturation, this turns on and turns this transistor off. Assuming a beta of around 150 again, we can determine the amount of current to ensure that this transistor is in the active region. So if we divide this 333 microamps, divide that by 150, that gives us about 2.2 microamps and 2.2 microamps this transistor will be in its linear active region. We don't want it to do that though we want it to be in its saturation state. So in order to do that we need to increase this by a factor of about 5 which would give us about 10 milliamps or 10 microamps rather. So that would be about 10 microamps. Okay, so we've established that we that we need 10 microamps of current flowing towards the base of this transistor in order to put it into saturation. So we don't want though to for 
this 10 milliamps to start for it to be 10 milliamps when this finally reaches 9 volts because that'll defeat the purpose. We want to put this into saturation right away early on so that this pulse goes high so we can replace this this ramp up because this is going to ramp up but we want a nice clean pulse over here. So we want this to do as soon as possible. So when this goes into saturation. This is going to be 0.7 volts right here. Let's move this over here. That's going to be 0.7 volts right here. We want this to be as low as possible. It can't be 0.7 because we have to have current flowing through this. If this was 0.7 then we'd still have zero amps going through here. So it has to be higher than 0.7. So let's say, let's, let's make this one volt here. And this is 0.7 volts. So that's 0.3 volts. So what resistor value would we need in order to get a 10 milliamp or 10 microamps flowing through that resistor at 0.3 volts across it. Well that's easy. You have 0.3 divided by 10 times 10 to the minus 6 which is 10 microamps and that should give us I came up with 30k 30,000 ohms. So a standard resistor value is 27K, and so if we use a 27K resistor there, what that does is that when this reaches, when this ramp up of this squirt of this wave we want to get rid of, as it ramps up, as soon as it hits one volt, boom, this goes into saturation, causes this transistor to shut off, and this will go high immediately. So that'll give us this right here instead of this right here. So at one volt. We're going to get this to go high, and then when this drops low, this is going to go low, and so on and so on. That's going to give us a nice clean square wave right there. So based on that, this is a schematic of our improved multi-vibrator circuit. So here's an image of our raw input waveform in yellow and our improved output waveform in purple. If you want to build this circuit, there's a schematic for it, and here is a um, the parts list right here. So that's the improved A-stable multivibrator circuit. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, Best practices and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com.